Welcome, I'm Michael Forster with CodeCloud. I wanna dive right into the seven steps that will allow you to pass any AWS certification. Okay, step one, make sure your prerequisites are solid. So before you even look at a certification, make sure you understand basic components of computing, the basic components of networking, make sure that you're comfortable on the command line, and I don't care if that's Bash or PowerShell, and also ensure that you can at least hack, if not actually feature program in a programming language. And if you don't know which programming language to start with, choose Python, be glad to hook you up with that. Last but not least in the prerequisite section is make sure you have a compelling why. Why are you going after the certification? Is it because you want more money? You need it for a project, you want more prestige? I don't care what your reasons are. Let's just make sure that you have a reason and that will fuel you as you go for 20, 40, 60, or 80 hours of additional study to achieve some of these certifications. Step two, pick your certification and get the exam guide for it and look at it. So if you wanna get cloud practitioner, go log into AWS certification. It doesn't require a login actually. And I want you to go there and I want you to grab the exam guide. It's almost always at the bottom of the page. We're gonna post a link here in general to certifications. And what you do is you grab the exam guide and then look at what it says that you need to know. Now that can be a little daunting, right? That can be overwhelming to look at the exam guide because it'd be pretty broad, but I want you to know how many questions are on the test and what you're kind of preparing for. Go look at the exam guide contents. That's step two. Step three is that now that you've chosen your certification, if you looked at the exam guide, well, we need some kind of study guide or some kind of program guide. Well, I would then go to this URL here, which is the AWS ramp up guide link. And this URL is gonna allow you either by role or by technology. So for example, like machine learning, storage, security, that kind of thing, or architecture, developer, that kind of thing. It's gonna give you access to an AWS crafted ramp up guide. Now these guides are gonna allow you step by step to know what to study by section and by content. And they're even gonna have times attached to them so you can see exactly what it is that you need to do in order to prepare for the role and therefore the certification. That's step three, get that ramp up guide, get that study guide. Step four, sounds like, mm, why would it be a step? This step is about taking what's in the ramp up guide, including those time delineations and put it on your calendar. We typically do what we schedule, schedule this out. I don't care if it's every day, every Tuesday, Thursday, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but carve out some time to actually invest in the actual stuff that's on the steps that are in the ramp up guide. Just schedule those out. As a general rule of thumb, by the way, the cloud practitioner foundational exam is gonna take you about 20 to 30 hours to study for. The associate level exams are gonna take you about 40 to 60 hours to study for. The professional level exams are gonna take you about 60 to 80 hours to study for. And the, the specialty exams, the high-end machine learning, security, advanced network working, et cetera, those exams are gonna require you about 80 to 100 hours to really prepare for how to use AWS in that certification. So you wanna invest you know, the appropriate schedule. So if one is to get your prerequisites, two is to actually pick your certification and get the exam guide, three is to get some kind of program study guide, four is to actually put that study guide steps, those steps in your schedule. Well then five is a little bit of a shift because now you wanna get hands-on. Some of that you can do with us in CodeCloud, but it's gonna be really useful for you to create your own AWS account and to go to workshops.aws and work on the workshops in areas that you're weak. Now, will you have to do this for every certification? No, Cloud Practitioner doesn't really require any hands-on, so you may not need to do that if you're foundational level. But believe me, if you're at the associate's professional and specialty level, you are going to need to get hands-on with these technologies to be able to answer questions about them because no amount of studying is gonna replace that experience. So if step one's prerequisites, step two is to get your target certification and exam guide. Step three is to actually get a program or ramp up guide for your certification. Step four is to schedule it. Step five is to get as much hands-on experience as possible. Now, in addition to obviously using CodeCloud sources as well as having your own free account, there are other places like aws.quicklabs.com and other playgrounds you can use in order to gain experience. Step six. And this is arguably the most important step past the actual scheduling of the exam is that step six is that you want to either use our practice exams or someone else's practice exams. Do not use exam dumps, by the way. 
I have worked for AWS and I've seen these exam dump sites and most of them are actually wrong. But for example, CodeCloud has practice exams. You could also use Tutorials Dojo as a recommendation. And with this recommendation, what you're doing with these practice exams is you're actually using them to study. We would not ask you to run a marathon without having actually run a marathon. So think of the practice exams as a way for you to actually take the exam and get used to these two or three hour exams in a lot of cases. So most of the questions in AWS applications are either 65 or 75 questions. And so what you're gonna do is you're actually going to run through a set of 65 questions and you're gonna run through them again and again and again, one set of them until you can get a 90 or 95 percentile or more on the pass rate. And then you're gonna to move to the next set of questions and you're gonna take those again and again and again until you can get a 90 or 95 percent pass rate. Now you might say to me, but Michael, isn't that just straight up memorization? Well, let me put this out. If you can memorize 180 items or even 300 items if you decide to take three tests, you deserve to pass. But let's be clear, you've already done the expertise work by following the ramp up guide. You've already gotten hands on. So the practice exam is there just to train you on how to actually take the exam. And it reinforces your recall and recollection of the material in question. But that step six is very important because you are not ready to actually schedule your exam, which is step seven, and pass it until you can actually get a 90 or 95 percentile on these practice exams cold. And you need to pass at least two sets of them, maybe three sets if you're not really working heavily with AWS, before your probability of passing goes really high. Okay, so none of this is a guarantee, but your probability is incredibly high if you follow these six steps. Now step seven is the last step, but once you get that 90th percentile on your two or three practice exam sets, you're ready to schedule your exam. So you can go straight over to certification. It'll take you to Pearson View. You can take it online or in person. Uh, you know, make sure you read all the fine print if you decide to take it online because it's a little trickier. <laughs> but just know that you sign up um, and you know the costs vary from anywhere from $100 for foundational to $300 for the professional and specialty exams, okay? So that's it, that's the seven steps. And in summary, it's basically one, make sure you've got your prerequisites. Two, make sure you have your certification target plus the exam guide that goes with that target. Step three, make sure you get a study guide or a ramp up guide either from AWS or from us. Step four, make sure you schedule out the study time and, and, and create a rigorous, like a semi-rigorous schedule for study for your exam certification. Step five, make sure you get some hands-on experience, which is arguably very important because otherwise you won't be able to actually do the role. Step six, make sure you, can, you have a set of practice exams that are solid and actually train you to take the exam. And they should give you the right answer and the wrong answer, by the way. And then step seven, go schedule your exam, pass, celebrate, win. I'm Michael Forrester from CloudCloud. Subscribe as we send out more and more emails on AWS and especially around certifications. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.